Technology is not a friend of mine. <laughs> so I'm going to begin with a little apology. Um, this past week, we had a group of uh, folks that went down to Lancaster in Pennsylvania to, to experience the Amish tradition. And um, I had sent back a uh, uh, script which had all these wonderful pictures, and uh, it never arrived. <laughs> So you're going to see some pictures uh, on the screen for sort of the half of this little message that I'm going to share with you. But uh, once we get to a certain point, it'll be blank. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> but I want to begin with uh, a story um, with Jack. And there should be a picture coming up. There we go. So this is uh, central, north central British Columbia. And there was a little hospital called St. John Hospital in uh, Vanderhoof, and I was a nurse there back in the 70s. And um, if I showed you a picture of the hospital, you'd say, ooh, that's kind of boring. So this is actually the picture looking out of the window in the second floor cafeteria. And you see the um, little mountain in the back? There uh, are deciduous trees, and so in the, in the spring, we would sort of say, like guess, try and guess when the leaves would come on the tree. That's how exciting li life is in Vanderhoof. <laughs> But I wanted to share you the story about Jack. So if you can imagine, um, this would be the nursing station in the hospital, right? So how appropriate. Pediatrics? <laughs> the medical wing, surgical wing, intensive care, maternity, emergency was behind us, and, and the um, office administration out yonder. But in the first room, it was a single room down the medical wing, uh, we used it often for people who were palliative, you know, who were ending their life. So there was a fellow by the name of Jack there, Jack Wilkinson. And uh, he was a, a wonderful farmer who carved a farm out of the forest around that area. As you can see, there's lots of forest. And uh, he had cancer, and so he was there for... Uh, about two months, three months, and he and I formed a pretty good relationship. And one of the hobbies he had uh, before he came to hospital was to, to create bolo ties. Any of you farmers know these? Yeah, you know, they go like this around your neck. Anyway, they're stones. They're non-precious stones, but I'm very blessed that he gave me one of those. So I was a head nurse on this unit, right? And... Um, Oh, man, there was days when I was pulling out my hair when I used to have some, and they, they uh, you know, I would need a break. And so I would go to his room and go in and close the door, and, you know, I'd say, Jack, I'm, I, this, is, this place is driving me crazy. So he would talk to me. He was a very wise man and calm me down, and then I'd go out and carry on. So one day... It was a particularly bad one. And I go in, and I slam the door shut, and I sat on a chair, and he said nothing. <laughs> so I'm stubborn, and I said nothing. So we looked at each other for about, I'm going to say five minutes. He just let me sit there. And then he said to me, Frank, what are you going to be when you grow up? <laughs> Is that real? At times, we talk too much, and we listen too little. And you know, that's kind of a funny thing, because, you know, we have only one mouth, and yet we have two ears. So be still and watch God in the continuing act of creation. And you know, at this time of year, it's an amazing time of grace. The little hummingbirds, they come to my window and feed the sunfish in the pond, they're making their nests. You know, they make big nests. These little fish make a nest that big just by their fins. Amazing. And all the green growth around us. Be still and listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen and open your heart to the guidance of that Holy Spirit. And be lit still and listen to Jesus as he reassures us when he says, I will be with you always. What a beautiful, comforting message 
I will be with you always. I will not leave you. So the second story I want to share, and I, I often go back to stories from my nursing career because there, there's wonderful people, wonderful stories that I met have from there. And uh, this was one night. I worked at um, uh, Sunnybrook Hospital in Toronto when I went back to uh, school. And um, I worked a night shift with Jenny. And Jenny and I, we were a team. We, we loved to work with each other. And it was the veterans wing, okay? So we came on one night, and, and as you go down towards the nursing station, there was a commotion from one of the rooms. This fellow was just yelling and carrying on and everything else. So we went to this, uh, to get the report. And I said, what's wrong with, jo with Joe? And the nurse who was going off said, oh, I don't know. He's just yelling and la, 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 la. So we got the report. And we said, well, before we do the first round, let's just go and see what's the matter with Joe. So we went over to his room. And I said, Joe, what's wrong? He said, I'm cold. Oh. So Jenny went and got a blanket out of the warming cover and put it on him. We positioned him around, and within a minute, like he was gone to sleep. And I was going to say, it's okay. I was trying to reassure him. I said, Jenny and I will be here all night. You don't have to worry. But by then, he was gone to sleep. Were you ever awakened at, say, 3 o'clock in the morning, right? You couldn't get back to sleep. You lay there alone in your bed, and there's all kinds of stuff going on in your head. Yes, nodding. <laughs> and sometimes it gets almost too loud for you even to hear your heartbeat. What if the, the doctor prescribed the wrong medication for me, or what if I picked up the wrong one? What if my, my daughter has an accident on her way to work? What if my grandson fails in school? Or what if I die before I wake? That's one. What if I die before I wake? You remember that prayer, now I lay me? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And You know, there's comfort in saying, but I don't know about you, but as a child, I was terrified of that prayer. If I should die before I wake... I know this reassuring that God will take care of me if I do, but like I don't want to die I'm a little child. And as a little boy, I didn't want to go to sleep and not wake up. I wanted to feel secure knowing that mommy and daddy were right next door in the next room, so if anything happened, they would be there to rescue me. And, and you know, that's what my mom did on many occasions. When I awakened with a fever or toothache, tummy ache, my mom would come in and wrap me in the blanket, take me out in the living room in the chair, and rock me back to sleep. And I rested knowing that she was always there next door. But you see, always is a human word. It's not always. And people die. And then what? My mom was killed when I was young and I was totally lost for a long time and I thought God had abandoned me, you know. But the thing is, I didn't have the same teachings that I, then that I have now. I did not know then what I know now. It was a horrible time in my young life because I believed that when my mother died, I was utterly, truly alone to face the world. Now, I'm certain that at some point in your lives, you have come up against a challenge. When you're alone, abandoned, frightened, worried, perhaps even sick to your stomach with anxiety. Maybe you lost your job, you've lost your partner. You were abused in whatever manner you were abused. Or your car broke down in the middle of winter, in the middle of the forest, with just you and the wolves, and you feel like, I'm alone here. But now I know, because I've heard that story, and I believe that story. 
no matter where I am, no matter what is happening to me, good or bad, no matter how tough the tough gets going, I know deep in my heart I am not alone. That Jesus said, I am with you always. You know, at times we all talk too much and we listen too little. Be still. Be still and watch for God in that continuing act of creation. Be still and listen. Listen to the Holy Spirit. And be still and listen to Jesus as he reassures us, I will be with you always. You have been called. We have been called. We are the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ as we spread his love and compassion throughout the world to the ends of the earth. We have been sent forth to love our neighbor and to love our enemy. And man, sometimes that's a hard piece of cake. It's hard to take the hand of the one who has just slandered you or mocked you, left you deserted, misused you and abused you Yes, it's downright incomprehensible to think that we are being asked to be with our enemy. But that's exactly what Jesus did. And that is exactly what he's asking of us to do. To love the one we may not know. To love the one we fear. But he doesn't ask, it, ask us to do it alone either. He said, I will be with you always even to the end of the earth. So no matter where you are, today, tonight, tomorrow, next week, next year, no matter what you are asked to do and no matter what that is, Jesus is with us always. If the hill seems a bit too high to climb, if the river seems too deep to cross, don't forget he said, I am with you always. And for that we say thanks be to God. Amen.